Hello, my name is Matt Kraus, and I am the CV doctor in Istanbul, Turkey. The title of today's lesson is Make Your Executive Summary Rock. Rock, by the way, is a slang word. It means to be really good. It means not just to be really good, but to be full of life, full of energy, brilliant. What happens when your executive summary rocks? Well, companies call you for interviews. A really good executive summary fascinates the reader. It tells him that you're going to solve his problems. It makes him want to pick up the phone and call you right now. A good executive summary has only four to six bullet points. It can be scanned in 10 seconds or less. It is sharp, concise, easy to read. It's not stuffed with keywords. And it's unique to you. It doesn't sound generic, like it could describe anyone. And remember, the executive summary is different from the professional experience part of your CV. The professional experience part is very detail oriented. There you have a page and a half to talk about all of the accomplishments that you've had in your career. So if you've been working on the professional experience section of your CV, you probably need to take a step back and maybe take a few days break before you go back and work on the executive summary. Why do you need to take this break? Well, the executive summary is all about the bigger picture of you. So you have to ask yourself questions like, what kind of brand do I want to create? What kind of story do I want to tell? What kind of picture do I want to paint? Here's a tip. Imagine the executive summary standing alone. There is no professional experience section, no education section, no languages and training section, none of that stuff. Only an executive summary. But it still has to tell your story. When the hiring manager reads your executive summary, he has to know who you are and what you can do. In that case, what do you want it to say about you? What do you want your executive summary to say about you? Let me use my own CV as an example to show you how to improve your executive summary. But before we start, let me sum up what kind of story I want to tell in my own executive summary. I want to tell the story of business communication. I want to tell the story of helping people to express themselves better, more professionally. But I also want the reader to know that I have a business background, operations, finance. I want the reader to know that I am a business person, not an academic person. All right, let's take a look. Here's the old version. What you see here now is actually two years old, and it's been a long time since I updated it last. My career has changed a lot in those two years, so my executive summary is going to change a lot too. See, right now, there are six bullet points, and only one bullet point, the first one, is about coaching, training, language. The other five are about my experience before I started communications coaching. I look at them. International trade experience, big budget money, financial analysis, ERP system, e-commerce. These are all good and valuable parts of my experience. I want my new story to have them too. However, I want my new story to say more about business communications coaching. Start by looking at that first bullet point. It mentions executive level, but it doesn't specify business language. 
I want it to be very clear that I'm doing business communication. So let's add that word in here. Training for business language. Presentation. However, remember that your summary needs to be quickly and easily scannable in 10 seconds. So when you add a word, you need to get rid of one too. In this case, I'm going to get rid of the word coaching because I already mentioned training and the two are kind of similar. Let's get rid of that word. Okay. Now, I want to add something else about business communication. Maybe another bullet point. But remember, I've got to keep it short and I already have six bullet points. So if I want to add another bullet point, I've got to get rid of one. Well, about two years ago, when I was doing this version, I was talking to a lot of ERP people. ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. In other words, big computer systems that companies use. And I wanted an executive summary that had some keywords that were going to appeal to them. I wanted to catch their eye. So two years ago, I added that part about ERP systems implementation. But now, today, that bullet point is not really relevant. I've moved on. My career has changed. So I can get rid of that bullet point entirely and make room for one more about business communication. So let's get rid of that one. Now we have five. All right, so what are we going to say now? We're going to add a bullet point, so we're back up to six. Well, executive level training for business language and presentation, that's pretty general. But the others are pretty general, too. International trade experience, big budgets, financial analysis, e-commerce, those are all pretty general. Remember that in an executive summary, it's okay to be general. Remember, we are telling our overall story, our summary. So we're painting the big picture. So before we write this bullet point, let's take a moment, step back, and think about this. I'm going to give you a tip, a useful phrase, to help you figure out what you want to say when you're writing your executive summary. Complete this sentence. This guy can help you do what? Think of someone you really impressed. Ideally, someone from your target audience. Imagine him talking to another person. Imagine him saying, you need to talk to Matt. He can help you do what? So now I'm thinking of a particular client. This is somebody who said something recently that made me feel very happy and proud. He explained what value I bring to my customers. He explained how I helped him. This is what he said. He said, Matt brings your presentations to life. Matt helps you find the words that you really wanted to say in the first place. Matt helps you express yourself so your audience listens. So that's what I'm going to put in my executive summary. Let me show you. Showing clients how to write and speak. So their audience listens. And in fact, I am going to put that up top. I'm going to put that up First, bullet point number one. Okay. So here's what I've got now. Showing clients how to write and speak so their audience listens. Executive level training for business language and presentation. Extensive international trade experience. Responsibility for annual purchasing budgets of $25 million plus. Financial analysis and budgeting for national apparel retailer. E-commerce business and operations development. Now, that's a big departure for me. 
And you can see bullet points number three through number six. Three, four, five, six. They're still very much focused on business operations, finance, inventory, international trade. But now, bullet points number one and number two, they're much more about training and communication. So that's one important thing to note about writing your executive summary. Most of the other things that we worked on in this course, like using active verbs or using parallel grammar structures, they're actually quite mechanical. They require a lot of patience and attention to detail, but they don't require a lot of creativity or brain power. They don't require you to define yourself. The executive summary, however, is all about marketing. It's about positioning. Imagine that you are a brand of laundry detergent sitting on the shelf in a supermarket next to hundreds of other brands of laundry detergent. The shopper comes by and you have three seconds to tell your story before that shopper moves on and picks another brand. In that three seconds, you have to tell your most interesting, fascinating story. You have to pull the shopper in. You have to explain what makes you special. What is your special value? And you only have three seconds to do it. That's the executive summary. Executive summaries require a lot of revision. Other parts of your CV, you might only revise those once every year or two. Your executive summary, however, you're going to revise that every couple of months, especially when you are changing careers uh, or when you're learning a lot of new skills, because what you write today might not be correct or accurate or a good picture two weeks from now or a month from now. So you're going to revise your executive summary often. By the way, when I'm working with a client on their executive summary, it takes a couple hours of very intensive face-to-face -face conversation. We sit there for a couple hours talking face-to-face. -face. And then, after that conversation, I go back to the office and I sit and I stare at those words for a couple hours before the picture starts to appear to me. So writing a good executive summary takes time. When you write a good executive summary, it might be short, it might just be four to six bullet points, but it's going to take time. It's really important that you give it the time that it needs. The difference will be between a boring, average executive summary that sounds just like everybody else's summary and an executive summary that really rocks. All right, that wraps up today's lesson. Remember, the point of today's lesson was make your executive summary rock. Grab the reader's attention. And remember, your CV can always be improved. These same rules always apply. They never get old. So improve your CV and improve your CV and then improve your CV again. My name is Matt Krauss. I am the CV doctor in Istanbul, Turkey. Thanks for watching. Take care.